The interesting thing about OCT is that it's a very general uh, technology. Uh, essentially, it's a way that you can measure both cross-sectional images as well as three-dimensional structures inside both materials and uh, bio biological specimens. So it has quite a wide range of applications going from fundamental science uh, to uh, clinical applications. The dominant application is in uh, ophthalmology and uh, it's now a, a standard of care. So I think that if you go into pretty much uh, any ophthalmologist, um, in this, in especially the specialist ophthalmologist, glaucoma or retinal specialist, uh, the, the uh, OCT, uh, OCT diagnostics are, are now uh, a standard. Um, and if we look at other areas, uh, one of the big areas uh, that's emerging now is intravascular imaging, that is fiber optic imaging of the coronary arteries. Back in the late 80s and, and early 90s, there were various researchers around the world that all contributed to the development and, and progression of OCT. One of the first OCT companies was founded out of MIT in 1992. Uh, it was an ophthalmic-oriented company called Advanced Ophthalmic Devices, uh, Professor Fujimoto, Carmen Pulafito and myself were funder, uh, co founders. That was acquired by Zeiss in 94, and then Zeiss just did a tremendous job over the next decade or so bringing this technology to market. And around 1996, I think Zeiss released their first uh, commercial uh, OCT Gen 1 system. So from there, the market has grown quite healthily, and, and today there are you know, lots of uh, ophthalmic companies and lots of OCT companies in various medical fields and non medical fields as well. So there's a concept of vertical integration that we like to stress, uh, and I think many groups are, are also uh, emphasizing the idea that you can take a fundamental technology from, from basic studies to engineer uh, systems, and then to put these systems into the clinical environment where we're actually able uh, to, to do studies with uh, patients and with uh, physicians. I'm focused on pulmonary imaging and it's such a fruitful area. There are so many different things that it can be used for in the lung. Because people haven't, because of this complex structure, people haven't really uh, delved into it as much in other organs. We're located in the pulmonary department. Pathologies below us, we're in the clinics every day. We're really integrated very much so in, in, uh, in their everyday life. I mean, uh, my, my faculty of position is within the pulmonary department, so it, it's, we couldn't do this without their knowledge. It has to be a very translational, very give and take, collaborative sort of uh, research. Our centre is part of the medical hospital in Vienna. So we have really a door-to-door -door collaboration with the medical doctors and that makes it actually very easy if you have some idea, we have some instrument that we built, uh, we can directly apply the technology then also to, to having patients then. Uh, actually profiting from those, from those developments. OCT already does a very good job in spotting those uh, cancerous lesions if it's non-melanoma. For melanoma it becomes a little bit more difficult um, because in this case also you need to penetrate deeper. Melanoma uh, grows downwards and, uh, and there um, possibly the combination with functional extensions could help improve also the capabilities there. If you look over the last decade or so, uh, worldwide, government funding has exceeded on the order of a billion dollars. So there's been a tremendous amount of government investment here in the U.S. and, of course, uh, everywhere else in the world. The government has played a huge role in making this field happen. The return has been incredible from an economic and a human point of view. And I think the same government invested is, uh, investment in the future is still warranted because there's just so many other applications that I think will continue to pay dividends. In the area of optical coherence tomography, we were, we were very fortunate uh, to be able to transfer this technology <coughs> from the university uh, to industry. And in particular, uh, my group was very fortunate to be able to work with uh, Eric Swanson. Eric was uh, involved in the early technology development, but also uh, in the commercialization. Actually, Eric is involved in a number of uh, network companies uh, which, which went public and became very successful. But this partnership really between people who have uh, engineering and business knowledge as well as clinical medicine I think is a very important uh, point because the challenge really is to be able to go from a laboratory demonstration to large scale applications. It's really uh, critical to be able to transfer uh, new advances uh, to industry in order to have a, a larger scale impact on healthcare. Uh, for me, uh, a kind of key experience was when uh, uh, 
for the first time actually had an instrument and there was a patient coming sitting in front of the instrument and actually I saw that somebody could actually profit a real person could profit from the from the ideas from the technology that we were developing so this was really very satisfying and uh, confirmed my my decision to continue my, my career in this field.